Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles, brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. Yes, sir. We here. My bad. My bad. I was I was waiting on that one to go away. <laughs> My bad. What's up, y'all? Showtime, Sean P. I got a great guest today. Uh, hopefully, y'all was looking at the social media and y'all saw that I had... My guy right next to me, Dennis Douglas. Dennis, the mama's boy, Douglas. Oh, excuse heavy me. Heavy on the mama's boy. Heavy <laughs> on the mama's boy. <laughs> Hold up. Since when? Um, I'll say like the past six months. Me and her have really locked in and gotten a lot tighter. Yeah. Because before I was actually trying to step away from that. I was saying- you know, Ste- I'm, Yeah, yeah. I was telling everybody from now on, just call me Dennis. Don't say mama's boy, but nah. You can't boy. say. You can't get away yeah, from it too that's much. That's facts. That's facts. That's where you come from. That's facts, one hundred percent. Have y'all had any conversations about that? She like, you know, this, that, so on and so forth. It got to the point where it was for a couple of months ago where I was like, I don't really want you to train me anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I really feel like you've taught me uh, everything that you can teach me. Yeah. It's time for you to move forward. Yeah. So, but we, like I said, we were going through. That's the that's the parent kid yeah. relationship. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was deeper than the box and stuff. I just didn't really like a lot of our energy outside of the gym. Yeah. So, and now you carry that. So, I was yeah, trying we, to step away. We could talk all day and all night. Yeah, I, I already know. I know. already know. But um, we, we've, we're we good now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just took me. I think for a while, bro, I was actually a mama's boy. Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. Come on. I didn't. Oh, know you that. didn't know. I didn't know that. Didn't, <laughs> you thought it was just your that. name. I thought I was just mama's boy in the gym. Yeah. But then I started realizing, like, bro, like, I don't really not do much outside of yeah. Cause she do everything. You feel yeah. me? Like I went to it, was, it happened last year when I went to do my taxes for the first time for myself. Like wow. she always does my taxes. Yeah. So I did it for myself. I didn't know what I was doing. Hold up, she just left you in the dark. Said, Bro, you on your own this year? No, nah, I, I did it myself. She busy. She, and I was like, oh, I want to do, I want to do more taxes because I got my, I got my business. I got my, I want to do it myself. Bro, I'm gonna have a heart attack if I try to do some taxes. <laughs> Bro, that shit <laughs> was crazy. <laughs> but it showed me I had to really like step up and learn how to do things on my own. Wow. So. I not went. taxes. Not everybody got to do taxes. You said not everybody got to do taxes? Other people like me. Oh. I'm going to pay somebody to do my oh, taxes. I'm not like about I'm a, to do that. I wasn't even paying. I'm going to wash some dishes. You know, I wash, ah, I, I I wash dishes. dishes you not know dishes. I mean? <laughs> hey, I'm going to stay at home dad now. Did you know that? That's amazing. No, it ain't. It's not. No, hell no. Why it ain't. Not That's not amazing. Because my wife got it twisted. Why she got she to... think because she go to work all day now and I'm at home all day that I, now I'm the stay at home dad. And, I'm, and that's what I, I got to do all the chores now. That's what it is. I'm still, but I'm still closing big deals all day, every day. Ah, <laughs> stay at home, dad. That's dope, bro. Like, you've lived a full circle life, bro. Yeah, like, bro. that's lit. Yeah. That's super lit. That's why I'm surprised to hear you say you're still training. Like, you. Yeah, like, for me, though, bro, like, and you know this, like, because you, me, you, so backstory, me and Sean have been homies since 17. Yeah. So he's come to my house. Um, I'll come to his house. So, like, you see, like, my life has always Greg, been... No, you said 2017? No, since 17. We were 17. Well, I was 17. Yeah, years you old. were 17. I was 17. Was, so you were 17? I was 17. God, I was 17 when I met you. When I came to Ken. Like, go to Ken. Hold up. I'm 35. How old are you? 35. Yeah. You wasn't... Set. Oh, no. When you were 17 when you met my dad. Nah, it was at the Nationals. That, what was that? USA's where you... Yeah. That was, I was, wasn't that 17? Nah, 17, 18, we had to be 18, like 19, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah. Anyway. It's been a minute. It's been yeah, a minute. Yeah, it's been a long um, minute. But yeah, yeah. so you, but you've been in my house, so you see the kind of lifestyle that I've lived where it's like, I didn't, I don't need boxing. So like, I was just up under them because they, they up. Yeah. Me, they lit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, them being his parents. Yeah, my, 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 my parents did very well in life. So I was like a trust fund baby. So for a while, boxing was just really fun for me. You know what I'm saying? But as a grown man, I was like, okay, I can't keep spending my parents' bread. I need to get my own bread. Mm-hmm. For me, so I just stepped away from them a little bit. But shout out to my parents. Shout out to moms. Yeah, I mean, like it's lit. We do the shout outs. That's cool. Okay, we do shout outs. <laughs> That's really a shout out to uh, them. Clear the air real quick. I know we only got 68 on here, so I'm gonna probably have you say it at the end. Uh, and maybe have you said in the middle too. Okay. But I think this is really, really important that everybody uh, hears what you're about to say. Can Sean pour the punch? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sean pour the king. I'll Sean, do it. No, I'll... let me tell this story. Let me tell this story. Let me tell this story. <laughs> Sean, actually, no, I'm not going to tell this story. Yeah, Sean pour the good punch. Yeah, yeah. Sean pour the good punch. You know, I don't know. You know, Carson and, and Ant, like, they thing is I, I can't punch. Nah, Sean. Because, you know, I, and that's the funny part. Like, the, the, 
the entire second half of my career was against elite fighters. It really was. And you already know, like, elite against elite, them fights don't you're one, of, you're one of the only fighters that I know that was at 165 as an amateur and brought your power down. Yeah. A lot of people can't go down and yeah. take that power with them. Yeah. Like, and, I feel like you got stronger. And Well, I don't know. I truly don't know if I got stronger. And I am on record for saying I think that near the end of my career holding that weight for so as long as I did, yeah. did actually decrease Working my power. Shit. But I mean, even that right there. Not too many fires can bring their weight do that. down that's, that's and still crazy. remain I'm as still strong. Still over here trying to do that now. Like, <laughs> trying to figure out how you did that. We'll wait. We'll wait. You fight. That I'm, I'm at 160, but I want to go to 54. Yeah. I'm go to 54. So I'm fighting potentially September 29th if do does we supposed to do. But Out here? Nah, mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. Okay. Atlantic City. So um, but then after that, man, I'm trying to go to 54. Honestly, you know what I'm saying like. I, I, but at the same time, I say that, but I want to fight whoever. So yeah, I was gonna say, like, why the move down? I especially, I know you. Like, you will fight anybody. I will fight anybody. Yeah. I don't. I really don't know. I swear, yeah. anybody. My mom Dukes feels like I should be at one fifty four. I can make the way. It's always just been about me dedicating to my diet. Which usually I walk in here with canes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my diet is like that's been it, but. I just, I'm having so much fun with my career, bro. Like, it's not like the typical boxing career because I don't have a typical boxing story. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just having fun, creating memories with my, my family, my mother. Yeah. And it's been, it's been a dope, dope journey. Real quick, we, get, we do got a, um, we got a couple guys coming on. OTX will be joining the podcast. Oh, that's dope. And they'll probably join for about 10 to 15 minutes. You familiar with OTX? Yeah, I've been watching them on Instagram. Bro. Okay. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what did you like about what, you know? What what you saw? So OC, OCX is the new promotion that's doing yes, fighting. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Nah, like I like that they're showing a lot of the young fighters love. They yeah. highlighting the fighters. Um, I saw the knockout where the boy was dancing. Where he from? The kid from he from Ohio. What's his name? Dude? Is he? Yeah. Um, he knocked dude out and started dancing on top. He's of He's from Ohio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. What's the kid's name? Um, um, I know, I know, my guy. He'll he'll catch it. Uh, the the first fight. It was the first. Albert 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 Bell. Oh Albert Bell. Yeah, Albert oh Bell. I didn't I didn't even yeah, hear that he Albert had got a knock on it. I did hear that he had fought on it. He put that joint. Yeah, dude, start dancing like. Yeah. It was hilarious. But I like what they're doing as far as like putting on these young black fighters. Yeah. Giving them an avenue or lane. Yeah. Because right now. I feel like boxing is taking a, a page from MMA in the sense that it's learning that we're entertainers. Like, we're, we're entertainers. Yeah. Entertain, bro. Yeah. Like, just this fighting a year. Of course, you want to see good fights. You want to see skills. Of course, that's priority. Yeah. But it's about entertaining. Because yeah. a lot of people don't even know what they're watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be super technical and all that and keep your distance, which is lit. But it's not going to sell. I kind of feel like it depends on what era you watched. There was an era where boxing truly was entertaining. Roy Jones and uh and Nassim mm. and uh Hasim uh uh, uh um, shoot uh Prince Hasim. Yeah. Yes, when when those guys were extremely he entertaining. Was ridiculous. He was insane. Right. The value was crazy. Before, during and after a fight. And those were we, we were the nineties. Like that yeah. was the nineties. That yeah. was when we were watching. That's what made me want to box. That yeah, era, that era. but I watching think Roy Jones come out to Red Man and Memphis Man. And Dave, yeah, I, he was the first one to do that. Yeah, my, from what I saw. Yeah. So, yeah. and so it depends on what, what era you watched. I think now we're coming for just like we're back into yeah, an era I agree. where guys are are making it more fun and entertaining. And then of course social media has you know a big presence in boxing now, yeah. where guys understand like hey. This highlight reel. If I if I recreate yeah, this gotta, on my social media, there, yeah. it entertains people, and now people, are, the fighters, are starting to realize like, ah, gotta, I can entertain. Yeah, you gotta you be know? more than just the box. You gotta be entertaining. You gotta talk well. You speak well. You gotta yeah. dress well. It's, yeah. everything comes full circle. You know what I'm saying so. I just got picked up on another platform. We'll talk about this probably near the end of the show. Pro Box TV. It is a um, a boxing platform geared towards delivering the news. And delivering the the in the moment stuff right now outside of boxing, outside uh, you know how most boxing shows and stuff like that. We re like even with this, like we reporting on the fights last night. We recapping the fights yeah, and we talking yeah, okay. about what's coming next. Okay, so it's they news talking about, about they talking about everything in between. Okay, so let, let's say hypothetically, Tank Davis put out a tweet right now that they feel, hey, this is something we need to talk about on this show. Okay, we're gonna talk about it on this show. Yeah, I ain't gonna you lie to you, mean? boxing is getting so juicy right now. Yeah, like, it's getting crazy. Like, it's, getting, <laughs> it's like a soap opera, bro. Like, it's fire. Like, you know what I just saw? That's crazy. Frank Martin versus Shakur. Yeah, 
Whoa, we are gonna get to that Whoa, too. But that's fire. That's a that's a that fight right fire. there. Fire, yes. I can't yeah. wait to get to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, let, I mean, let's just dive into <laughs> it. Since the pictures is up, let's dive into yeah, it. Bro. I mean, when you Frank Martin, Frank first though. So I met Frank Martin like this was probably like four years ago. He came out here. He was at Mingo the gym four or five years ago, and he was relatively unknown at this time. But I just liked his energy. I liked how he was. Like he was to himself, working out hard. So we spoke, and he was like, "I'm trying to sign." I think I'm a solid man with it. And I was like, I'm, I mean, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, he ended up doing what he's doing. He's locking up with Arrow and just watching his career come come to where he's gotten. So, yeah. like, I'm, I'm proud of him. Yeah. But then Shakur, I've known Shakur since he was, like, six, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Y'all both from yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, that's low, bro. Yeah. To the fact that he just hit me talking about we going to spar. He coming out here soon. We going to spar. So, low key, I'm helping Shakur get ready for that. I don't like that dude, man. Ooh. You don't like Shakur? He, the first time I met him, he said, yo, we going to spar? I'm like, dang, like, let me live someone, a little bit. All, he want all the smoke. He want all the smoke. <laughs> people don't understand this, though. Like, what I love about him, he's really been that way since he was like six, Tim? seven. I, when, I, remember, I remember when I was younger, I was probably like 17, so I'm thinking Shakur's probably 12, whatever. I used to bring my girlfriend to the gym. Some flirt with my girlfriend in front of me, like, I'll beat your boyfriend up. Like, oh, wow. As a, like, it, was, it was all love, though. Yeah, 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 but, but on some... I want this. Yeah, that, he, that, he, this is who I am. He been like that, bro. Wow. So, so like, it's late to see him as a grown man. Where does like, it come from? Do you think? Do you know? Do I? Do where, where his? Where the his? Jersey, Newark. Yeah, yeah, Newark. Straight up, bro. bro you be outside, growing up outside. It's know? the streets. It's the streets. It's, it's the it's the atmosphere. As far as, and it's interesting because like he was in the streets, but he was protected because yeah. like, his pop, his grandfather, all that. So people looked after him. So yeah. So you get to learn that street life, but you're not living it for real, bro. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So I feel like that's what created who he is. But that boy different, bro. Yeah. That boy is different. So what do you think about this fight? <sighs> I, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Like, I'm not picking anybody against Shakur. I'm always going to pick Shakur. Yeah, so, yeah, I get it. I get it. Shout out to Frank. Though. I really like Frank. I think it's over a great fight. But for me, Shakur versus everybody, bro. That Southpaw versus Southpaw. You know, I'm being camp. I'm excited. You got, I, listen, you got a a natural counter puncher, Shakur Stevenson. You against yeah, against a against a, a like a lead off hitter uh -huh. that can counter as well. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I really think that this this one right here is special. I think Shakur's though Shakur's range because I don't think. Frank uses his jab enough for Shakur, you know what I'm saying? Because Shakur, how you going to get in? You're not going to get in with no, no yeah. banger. You, he keeps good keeps good distance. It's hard to really time that. It ain't too many southpaws that jab, like jab, though. You know what I mean? Like He he, he even, does. He pulls Shakur out. He pulls, pulls with his jab, too, though. But, but he's active with it. He's I think he's active. twice as much, though. With the, Yeah, he's yeah, active with he's the jab, good. but he's twice as much with the pawn as he is as, mm -hmm. as a clean jab that he wants to land, That's you know? That's true. But I watched, I was watching his fights the other day, and um, yeah, he nonstop with it, nonstop with it. He keeps yeah. out there, keeps in the face, keeps you busy. So you never know when he's gonna change the speed of it, when he's gonna fully extend it. Boy, good man. Yeah. So, and you already know I'm a cheat code, bro. Like I was just talking about this. Uh, I was in the interview earlier today, and I said every camp I've been in has won, with the exception of you and Arrow. <laughs> and you still did amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. You did amazing. Like, yeah. Every camp that I've been in, my, the fight I've been in. I'm camp, glad you only had one, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's, except the, the one with this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, nah. you know? So I've been in camp. I'm saying I was with Canelo with James Kirkner, which was a minute ago. Floyd for, for three fights. Badu for four fights. Um, I, David Lemieux. Um, Saku Powell back in the day. I've been Dang. just. Yeah, yeah bro. I was cute. in the, some some people. Like, I've had some great camps. And all of the camps I've been in have won, so yeah. I'm calling myself the Chico. So, man. so you you trying to get in his camp? That's basically what you're going. I'm yeah. in there. We already talked. Like, I'm in there. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm in bro. I'm in there. Are you doing everything though, or are you just spawn? Like, you I, I, mean? I like, really like doing everything, but yeah. we'll see what, what how they want to use me. Because like I said, I'm here for my own stuff. I have a lot going on, my businesses, my kids. So I'm not as available as I used to be. Mm -hmm. But I would love to run, strength and conditioning. Let's do all of it together. The way you've created your life now, is it easy for you to kind of like put everything else on hold and go straight to boxing? Yes. 
Yeah. And then you, it seems like you keep working in between. Yeah, so I have my yeah. business, which is going like amazing. You, but you working off canes for the most part. Ah, uh, actually, <laughs> <for the, laughs> no, nah, I really don't eat canes. I actually just had that because I got here a little. I got here and I was hungry, and there was nothing really around here. Yeah, it's like I don't eat canes, but I actually I intermittent fast and I eat super clean. Do honestly, you? I really do. Like it's so crazy that you caught me. Get out of here! I eat super clean. <laughs> I eat super clean now. How much you weigh now? One seventy two, but I also drink two gallons of water a day. You That's feel, clean right there. You, you drinking two two gallons two of water? Two gallons a day. Don't be don't be hyping me nah, up on that, man. You, I yeah. promise you. Two gallons a day. Okay. Listen, we got OTX on. We are gonna get to OTX after we get to OTX. We done with you, big dog. You you answered the question I needed you to answer. That I got power. That was the most important reason you're here today. Ah. And then I, <laughs> after that, we might talk a little bit more about this one, and then we just gonna kind of get into the rest of boxing. Let's do it. And then we are gonna get up, up up out of here. I'm here, uh, so let's get it. First, let's let's get these guys on. Um, grab my notes real quick. Director of the Fighter Operations, Mr. Britton. Harden and the GM over of Overtime Boxing, Brandon Rose. Welcome to the Porterway Podcast, fellas. What's going on, brother? Thanks for having us. What's up with y'all? Sean, what's the word, brother? Man, I'm smooth. How y'all? Good, man. Back in New York City after a roller coaster ride in Atlanta doing yeah. those shows. You saw it. Tell us a little bit about the roller coaster ride. Um, remember when I called y'all, y'all were going into the fourth week, and I I didn't really truly have an understanding of everything i said wait a minute y'all yeah, been doing shows once a week for the last three weeks how was that whole from beginning to end that experience this was y'all first time promoting boxing correct yeah yeah sean it was an incredible experience but i i want to take a step back from that and just explain to how we got there and then i'll let Britton talk more about the, go, the go, roller coaster ride yeah, no this is your interview uh, all of a sudden so go ahead <laughs> <laughs> absolutely man <laughs> Yeah, so I just want to educate people a little bit, you know, the people who may not know what Overtime is, because Overtime has been around now for six years as a media company. That was the start. You know, we knew that Gen Z was migrating away or never had TV the way that even I grew up with TV, right? So they were consuming this content, especially through sports on social media, picking their favorite teams through different outlets. So Overtime started with the vision of basically capturing the young audience, millennials and Gen Z. And it just quickly exploded. I've been here for five years now, and we've now gotten up to 80 million plus followers across Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, basically anywhere where young people are, that's where we are. We then you know, got Liberty Media to back us in our last round. They own Formula One, they own the Atlanta Braves, and we started to push the idea of creating our own leagues. So that's where you saw us, Sean, in Atlanta, is in OTE, which is our basketball facility and our basketball league where we have some of the best, basically 16 to 19 year old basketball players across the world come train in our facility, live there. And we just sent two top players uh, to the NBA, the Thompson Twins, number four and five draft picks. So we've really proven out that system from a player development standpoint, a brand sponsorship standpoint, and also a media rights standpoint, we're on Amazon. And we just did an Amazon documentary. Then we launched OT7, our seven on seven football league, which is in the basically in the spring, it's helmetless football. It's the best high schoolers. They then get recruited to college. So as I met Britain and as I started getting into boxing, actually using my hands myself and consuming the content, your content and others, it was very clear to me that there was a lane for what we were doing in basketball and football, but in boxing. Yeah. Because the stories in boxing, as we all know, are incredible. The fighters really deserve um, an opportunity to get their story told. They work so hard. But oftentimes, until they get to 24-7 or until they get to our access level, they don't really get that shine. So that was the genesis for why we wanted to get into boxing. And then Britton and I linked up. We started working together. And then the, all the ideas for OTX started to form and crystallize. So I just wanted to give that background for the people so they could understand. Perfect. Why is overtime coming out of the blue? Who are they? What are they doing? And why boxing? So that's kind of how we got here. Whose idea was it for boxing? Was it Brandon's idea or Britton's idea? Yeah, I had been I had been pitching the gospel internally, um, basically. So my personal story, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've always been a boxing fan, obviously been growing up a fan of Floyd from day one. You know, remember going to my uncle's house, watching all the pay-per-views and everything like that. But in the pandemic, I actually had an opportunity to start boxing. And then I did the Golden Gloves in New York this past uh, this year. Um, but throughout that whole process of training, that's when I was kind of seeing everything and pitching it internally. 
Did you but lose? Then Brittany and I linked up. Hold on, because you fast forward oh, and pass. <laughs> yeah, you fast forward and oh, pass. Yeah, I pull, I pull. Yeah. Don't do my man like that. No, I don't want to hear that you did, Golden Gloves. I want to hear how oh, it went. You know? How'd that go? Oh, it was a great. It was great. I loved it. I, I got to the semis. I thought I should have won that fight. It was a split decision. Um, and if I would have won, I would have fought at the Garden. But I went. I'm four and one. Um, every other win I had was UD. Um, I got a bunch of standing eight counts through that process. So you know, I did my thing. I'm I mad at you. I'm mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So through that whole process, me and Britton met. Uh, we linked up. We shared a vision. Uh, he's been in the boxing industry. I'll let him tell his story, but he's been in the boxing industry for years now. Yeah. And we basically aligned very closely on everything that we saw and everything we could implement. And we built a relationship basically over a year's time. And then eventually we got the green light and it was time to bring them on. And that's how we got got together. I'm actually uh, very appreciative that you slowed me down and you went back to the beginning. What I know about boxing is it's a small community. It's a small family. So anybody coming in, if we don't know you, if we don't trust you, we, we holding our feet out and we saying get kick rocks. You know what I'm saying? And so I right. think it's important for people to understand who OTX is, what you guys are trying to do, striving to do. I appreciate you for telling your story because I, I would not have been able to get there without you. So thank you for that. Britton, real quick, kind of tell everybody your story and where you, obviously I know where you come from in the boxing yeah. world, but tell everybody, you know, where, you, where your roots are in the, in, the, in the boxing world. For sure. For sure. So, I mean, very similar uh, to Brandon. I grew up a boxing fan. I've been a boxing fan my entire life. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, boxers were like the superheroes for me in my household. My dad would always host fight parties and, you know, I would be at the center of it trying to throw punches and, you know, all his friends would get a laugh out of this little dude, you know, throwing combinations or whatever in front of the TV. But as I got older, um, I knew that I wanted to be uh, I knew I wanted to be in boxing somehow, but I didn't know how. And you said something that's extremely important. There is no linear path to getting into the boxing industry. There's no class that you can take. There's no you know agency that you can work at to go and get the background. You kind of just got to learn. You got to stumble. You got to fall. You got to meet people. And it takes a long time to get to a place where you really feel like an expert in the space. Um, what you know, maybe you don't even know about me, Sean, is I spent almost 10 years in between CAA and WME. Those are two of the largest talent agencies in the world. And... I was learning business development. I was learning licensing. I was learning how to enterprise. I was learning how to build business around talent. Mm -hmm. um, and all the, the while I'm working there and getting promoted throughout the years, I'm pitching boxing and I'm saying, you know, because I'm so close to the sport, Floyd Mayweather's walking away with these kind of checks or, you know, such and such fighters walking away with these kind of checks. If we represented these fighters for their in-ring uh, activities, we will be getting a percentage of that. Um, at the time, I would say that they weren't getting the vision as fast as I wanted them to. Yeah. And so I knew that I, it was time for me to go out and kind of start getting to that on my own. Um, at the time, I was living in Los Angeles and I had been in a number of different gyms from uh, glove works to uh, pound for pound boxing to uh, uh, a wild card and, 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 a, and the list goes on. And I'm making friends with these fighters and these coaches and they become the know me as the guy who works at the agency. And so they would like send me their contracts and they would say, Hey, would you look at this contract from my fighter? Uh, it's a new promotional deal or it's a new such and such deal that somebody just put in front of my fighter, but you know, they didn't really know how to evaluate contracts. They knew that I had that knowledge. And so they would trust me with that. And I wouldn't charge them or want any percentage for anything because this is, this is where I wanted to be the entire time. Right. And so, I took that as an opportunity to just learn the contracts, learn the way that the business was being established and, um, you know, just started to sign fighters on my own and become a, became a boxing manager after I left the agency space. I did that for nearly four years. That's where you and I met um, when I was, uh, uh, you know, working with Brandon Adams. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, at that point, I started to recognize that there were some low level opportunities that some promotions and some networks just weren't taking advantage of. And so I pitched it to a number of different companies over time being one of them. And uh, Brandon got my email and within two days, he and I were on a Zoom call similar to this, just you know, going back and forth on how we saw the sport and how we thought we could be additive, how we thought that we could benefit the sport, um, the kind of talent that we liked. 
And like he said, over the course of a, of, of a year, we really came to see that we had a very clear vision that was pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, and he had been kicking around the idea and pitching it to whoever would listen to him internally at overtime. And a year later, here we are today, having uh, promoted our first four shows. You know, there's a lot of nuance and context in between that that I don't have time to share. But I think that, you know, the most important thing is Overtime is an innovative company that believes in positive disruption. And that's what I love about the company. Um, and in the short time that I've been with the company, Brandon says, you know, we do these calls together. It's like, Brandon's like, I've been there five years. I've been like, I've been here five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the short, the very short amount of time that I've been with the company, man, um, you know, I got out on that road and, and signed nearly 50 fighters uh, for the four events that we did in August. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's what I love to do. And, um, you know, overtime has given me an opportunity to do that on a, on a very large platform. And I appreciate it. Either one of you guys can a answer this. Why did you refer to positive interruption? Disruption. No, excuse me. Disruption. Yeah, I'll, I'll start and then Britain build on it. You know, I, I think our whole thing coming into the sport has never been that we're going to try to take over the sport. or We're going to try to compete with, you know, top ranked matchroom, PBC. They do what they do and they do it well. But we also have a lane of what we can do well, right? We have, like I said, 80 million social media followers. We do 2 billion video views a month. So if we can take the young fighters and we can give them a presence that they're not used to, or we can give them experience they're not used to, um, it can be positive for the sport. So I, I don't think it necessarily as disruption as much as being an addition, because we're just a new element that I think is positive for everybody. And from the beginning, what we told all the promoters and we have good relationships with all of them is that we'll do a deal with anybody who wants to do a deal as long as it makes sense so we had develop fighters we had golden boy fighters we have a great relationship with matchroom uh, because we we're on the zone we haven't mentioned that yet we we're on the zone this year so we couldn't do a deal necessary with a you know someone who was cross network but um, in general they all see the value because we we just do something that they don't do right and they do things that we don't do we're not trying to do Crawford versus Spence pay-per-view at T-Mobile because that's not our business. But what we definitely can do is we can take a young fighter, a prospect, or a contender and bring them to a next level because of the visibility they get. We can take a great fighter like Albert Bell, who you know is near title shot, and we can create a viral moment where he's getting two, three million views on social media. And now all of a sudden his market value has changed. He's gone up in the rankings. And now we could potentially do a co-promotion with Top Rank or someone else. So again, we're we're additive to the sport. We work with everybody. We're not trying to, you know, outcompete Top Rank, like I said, because one, we don't have the pockets. And two, I think a lot of people came into boxing, you know, Triller and others thinking, okay, I got a billion dollars and I could just go buy it. And I don't think that's necessarily the best way to approach it. We've always come in kind of building up from the grassroots, right? Going in, like Britton said, he literally went on the road to probably, you know, 20 different gyms, maybe more than that. Like, like Britton called me. He was, he was Britain, never Britain. in the office. Britton, we spoke on the phone, right? Yes, we did. I thought, I thought so. Yeah, we spoke on the phone. Yeah, he definitely on his job. Although you hit me back, I wanted that fight. You hit me back, though. I was going to say, what happened? Uh, what uh, happened? We're not, we, we not done. We're right, not done yet. Uh, I we just getting started, I, brother. I you might be getting you might be getting the call from me soon. You uh, never know. Uh, not like that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm That's gonna hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell 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 everybody some of the unique qualities that OTX presents to boxing, brings to boxing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll, I'll take that one, man. I, you know, one thing that, um, and I can speak for Brandon when I say this, we pride ourselves on is we did a lot of research and we spoke to people that we want to be fans of boxing. You know, like we, we understand that uh, to your point again earlier, Sean, like boxing is a small community and you can have a lifer fan, right? Some Somebody like myself and Brandon just grew up in the sport. We love it. But then we also wanted to be able to attract uh, like uh, the casual fan and we didn't want them to be afraid of, um, you know, having to learn a new sport or struggling to understand it as it's going on. So we did a lot of research talking to people I'm trying to understand the things that they like about boxing and what they don't. And some of the things were just like, you know, very low hanging fruit. Like they don't like draws, yeah. right? They, 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 they don't like to see a draw. You see two people in the ring and they're fighting. One person deserves to win. So what do we do? We developed the overtime round yeah. where in, if you have an eight round fight and the fight is split uh, four to four 
and the judges call it a draw, well, now you have an opportunity for a winner take all round where the winner of that round will be the winner. And we had uh, an opportunity to experience an overtime round while we were you know, doing our series on the ground in Atlanta and the, the audience loved it. Uh, the, the, the stadium was electric. The roof almost blew off of the building. And so it's like those kind of moments you can't make up. That kind of energy yeah. is powerful when you feel it. And so we, we really appreciate, um, you know, just the audience for being receptive to the innovation that we're trying to bring or the new ideas that we're trying to bring to the sport. Because uh, in essence, we're, we're trying to just fulfill um, maybe what they see as a void. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, it's done in other sports, but not so much in boxing, where we are uh, doing, we're implementing uh, fighter bonuses. So we're incentivizing the fighters to always press for the action. If you get a, a knockout in the first or the last round, uh, we're giving you kind of what we call a bump up bonus. And if you get a knockout in any round in between, you get a, a pretty good uh, bonus on top of what your guaranteed purse is. And that's to one. Uh, get rid of the filling out process in the first round. Go for it. If you feel like you got the knockout, go for it. And then the last round, if you're winning, you might as well finish that guy off, right? So the audience was really receptive to that. The fighters really appreciate it. And, um, you know, you never know. You might see some more innovation from us in the next iteration. I like that. When do you guys expect to come back? That's what. That's exactly what we're working on right now. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to get back in the lab. I think what we always said is, we're going to do this four series as a tent pole. And a lot of people thought we were crazy for that, right? Four in one month. That's almost how we started the conversation. Yeah. Right? Um, but what we knew is that if we created a momentum in that month, that it would be something different, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't really seen a tent pole like that. Because we're not, again, we're not going to be able to do Crawford Spence or Tank Ryan. That's not what we're going to be able to come out the gate and do. But we could do something different. Yeah. So that's why we created that Atlanta Club vibe in the venue, that's why every week you saw more and more celebrities in the building, why our phones were blowing up, everybody hitting us for tickets, and we were getting stressed out by the fourth week, like, how are we going to seat these people? Um, you saw Melo and Steven Jackson sitting next to us ringside. So it was just a vibe in the venue. So that's what we want to focus on is build something special for the fighters that they want to come back to, build something special for the fans, and try to create an experience in the venue that's just different. And I think we accomplished all of that. We had a happy sponsor in C4. The zone's really happy with it. So right now, uh, we're going to spend a couple weeks, get back in the bat cave, as I say, and re replant everything. But we we having a lot of good conversations. A lot of things are coming our way. Um, some of the bigger promoters are wanting to collaborate. Some big names are calling us as well. Uh, so we're going to sit down and evaluate everything. But I think at a minimum, kind of OTX own shows, we're going to do more next year, certainly. And as we look for continuity with some of the fighters, uh, that we had this year, we're definitely going to keep them busy because one of our tenants is one, uh, keeping the fighters active like they used to be in the old school. I mean, people would fight 10, 15 times in a year. I'm not saying we're going to get to that level, but I think, you know, especially the fighters at our level prospect stage, we should get them at least four fights a year. And one of our tenants is competitive matchmaking because what we know from the fans and the fighters is that a lot of them are ready for a step up and to get higher in those rankings or to get higher purses, they have to be tough competition, just like you did, Sean. I mean, you're the blueprint for that, yeah. right? So that's that's some of the things that we're thinking about, um, but we're definitely going to go bigger and better going forward. I think a couple more things for me, and then, and then you guys can go. Do you got anything for them? Um, no, I'm just, I, I, first I want to say. You're enjoying the conversation. I am. You? I'm loving what y'all <laughs> doing, man. I'm loving, I'm loving this because boxing, for real, is like an old boys club. Like, the people that are running it, they running it, and they passing it down to their people. There's no real lane for anybody else to come in and start something new and do it. So I love that you guys have appealed to the social media aspect and removed yourself from, like you said, a competition with them because you can't really compete with yeah. the top ranks, the Roller Boys. They got it all locked. So you guys created your own lane, yeah. and you're doing it your way. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. So make sure you hit my line, get me on one of them <laughs> joints, and be one of them fighters up. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Let me be him up. Let's get yeah. it. Where, yeah. where else can can people see uh, the things that were done down there in Atlanta those those previous four weeks? I know obviously there's stuff still on the zone. I'm I'm imagining where else can they go take a look at this content that you guys got from from uh, from OTX? 
Yep, you can watch all the full shows on DAZN. They're currently up there. DAZN has highlights on their YouTube. So if you want to catch kind of a 10 minute YouTube vibe, you can do that. And then you can follow us at Overtime Boxing on Instagram or TikTok. All the highlights, social media clips are all there. So, you know, those are kind of the main places you can check it out. And you guys have now basically established a boxing channel, just like the basketball channel, just like the football channel that you had. Yeah. That's yes, amazing. that's right. That's right. And our social media team, I mean, Gabe on our team, he's he's a wizard, man. Yeah, we uh, we hit over a million followers uh, between Instagram and TikTok already. Count's been live for three months. We did over 200 million views in those three months. Um, so we're, we're off. We're off, wow. man. It's, it's up. Another um, important component to OTX that I, I feel is extremely important, and I want to make sure that, or, or not make sure, but I want to ask you guys, uh, the stories of the fighters, those are highlighted for everyone on the card or everyone that's going to be promoted on OTX. And this is what I was telling them. Like, if you fighting the first fight of the night at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, first of all, it's 17 people at the fight to see you fight. And then after that, you're done. You 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 in the, in the stands after the fight. Don't nobody even know that you fought. Right. Down there, top fight to the bottom fight, they got an entire profile on you. And you can go watch and see what that person's all That's about. Dope. Dope. And kind of elaborate more on that for me, please, if I'm wrong. But... You guys got somewhere for these for you can take a look at these fighters and see who they are, you know? Yeah, that's, absolutely, that's Sean. And that was strategic. That wasn't by accident. You know, to 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 Brandon's point, man, when we when we first linked up, we wanted to establish that there needed to be respect and admiration for these athletes who go out and put their lives on the line for our entertainment. And so it it benefits no one for you not to know the gladiator that just got out of the ring, right? as they're walking through the arena. We want every fighter to feel like the biggest star when they walk through an OTX tunnel before they get into the get into the ring. You have no idea, well, you guys, but like the audience for the most part will have no idea what that can do to the psychology of a fighter when they're treated like a star, they show up. And we had a number of upsets because these fighters were treated like stars. We went out to go do profiles on them. Um, you know, from the moment they touched down in Atlanta, we treated them like they were uh, the athletes that were putting their lives on the line. So, you know, me and Brandon really care about these fighters. We handpicked every single one. We went out and signed them. I got on the road, like uh, Brandon said, and went to 20 plus different gyms, signed all of these fighters, did a lot of diligence on the matchmaking and the fighters, um, because the idea is we want to find people who not just can um, fight and are good at social media, but who have those you know, human life stories, those interest stories that we know people will gravitate towards. And when you think about what will cause somebody to uh, fight for a living, yeah. every fighter has a dynamic story. And so we yeah. wanted to highlight that and pay yeah. tribute. Yeah. Very good. Um, last but not least, as promoters of boxing now, OTX, how do you guys feel about being promoters in boxing, professional boxing? Uh, I'll start, Brittany, you can go second. Um, I mean, I love it. It's fun. That's I think that's the easiest way to put it. I mean, we both love the sport. We both compete in the sport. We were just over at Gleason's getting some sparring in this weekend. I ran home from work, lifted weights, got on this call. You know, that's what we do. We we wake up, we think about boxing. We then go to the gym and box. We sleep thinking about boxing. So for me, it's it's really a passion project. We really love it. We're really having fun with it. And our company's behind us to to make it successful. And we're trying to create entertainment and create art, um, as Britain would say. So it's always about how can we create a vision? How can we make something different? Um, and again, be additive to the sport that we love. So it's it's been great. Very good. Can I ask you, yeah, who, do you who do you train with in Gleason's? I, Sorry, I train with Jihad. Jihad at Gleason's. Okay. You, do you know Blimp? Yeah, I know Blimp. I know Don. I know Cat. All of them. Okay, that's um, that's how we got Scooby, because Scooby trains with Don oh, okay, over there. Okay. Uh, Sags, um, that's but yeah, that's... so we're always in the gym. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and I'll just follow up by saying this is this is all I've ever really wanted to do, you know. Uh, so this is a dream come true for me. I'm on a cloud right now. You know, people ask me, like, have you come down? And I'm like, no, like I'm having the moment. Let me stay here. You know what I mean? Uh, to, 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 to have the opportunity to service athletes that I've always saw as superheroes 
you know, like it, it's just, there's no words that I can really put to that except for that. I'm going to, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do my best every single day. Uh, you know, we have this running joke to try and create art, right. Whether it be in the arena, in the fights with the stories, whatever it is that we're doing, we're really putting forth our best effort. And to Brandon's point, you know, we were just sparring on Saturday, uh, waking up, uh, and, and going for, you know, three mile runs before we hit the office, getting off, off work, going back to the gym, because we want to know what these fighters experience and what their lives are like. So that when we are, you know, catering to them, um, we, we really understand what we're talking about. We had an experience where, and I won't say any, any locations or any names, but we went to a gym and we were working out, we're hitting the bag. And this fighter was like, you guys, you know, work at OTX. And we're like, yeah. And I just happened to ask him, like, when's the last time your promoter got in the gym and worked out with you? And he's like, man, this never happened, <laughs> right? And that just made us, you know, like I looked at Brandon, we both were like cheese and ear to ear because we know how much that means for a fighter, mm. right? For them to see us putting in the same grind that they're putting in. Mm. So, you know, man, this is this has been amazing. It's uh, It's been a dream come true. And, and we just want to put our put forth our uh, best foot and Tell our best what, effort. I know that wasn't no golden boy fighter because Bernard Hopkins uh, still be, he still a, be at the gym. That fight. wasn't no golden boy fighter. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you guys, man. Good luck for everything moving forward. God bless you guys with everything moving forward. And I look forward to having you back on the podcast. As soon as y'all got something popping, let me know. My boy, you also got to tell me where you got them couches from. The couches too sexy, man. Nah, Emerald green, I, I, gold you, you touches. You would laugh at me if I told you where I got them from, so I'm not going to do that. All right. All right. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Hey, Thanks bless y'all. Appreciate it. <laughs> Peace. Yes, sir. That is OTX. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm impressed. I think people in the boxing world who've come across them, the fact that they're two young uh -huh. black men doing it is, has really kind of caught fire. And, um... You know, not to say too much about their business model, but it's what I've always said. In order for boxing to move forward, get bigger and better, you got to involve people that don't come from this sport. That's you said it. This ain't nothing but some hand-me-down stuff, it's and it's beer. going That's the same it. way. That's no it. disrespect to anybody, but then here comes something brand new, something innovative, and something to get these fighters up and going. I agree. I agree. There's I really, I don't know if you, there's really no A side, B side over there. He said we got some, we have some upsets, but that means the B side ain't really performing like a B side. And boxing, you know? boxing is really going in that direction anyway. Like there's no real A side, B side. That's not really mattering when fighters, I think post COVID, because a lot of these B side fighters was at home on COVID, not working, training, training, training. <laughs> <laughs> so now B side's out here turning it up. So. I'm like, in a way, boxing's going. I love what they were just talking about. Love to see young black men working like that, staying locked in. So it's dope. Brent hit my line. I'm trying to fight. Call me, hit my phone. And, and Rob Boogie, these uh, uh, couches is sexy, okay? He just mad because I ain't going to go at him. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to go at him right now. But, they, um, they comfy, too. They we comfy need to too. get that, that, that in real quick, that uh, the ad. We need to do yes, yes. I'm commercial reminding, time. I'm reminding my producer commercial that time. we got to do something. We're going to shoot this ad to you guys right quick, and we'll be right back. Is it cute? Lifesavers restoration. You got mold in the house. You got rain, uh, flood in the mm -hmm. house. Carpet need to be pulled mm -hmm. up. House need to be restructured. Lifesavers restoration. They got you right in. Yeah. If you're in the SoCal area, you can reach at Lifesavers restoration at 747-265-6644. Las Vegas area, where me and Sean's located. That's 702-845-1325. <laughs> and if you're a first responder, senior, teacher, you get a 10% discount. Cause we're trying to help and give back. Yeah, that's what they do. They have a model that I believe in wholeheartedly. No job is too big, no job is too small for us to care. They care about you just like they cared about me when they came to my house. I had some water damage, a whole bunch of stuff coming through. They came over, man, house looked like new. Yeah, man, I've been working with this guy for over five years. And I believe in my trust in my son. My family took care of Sean. Anybody in my family had water damage, I trust and believe in this guy. And so, you know, I wouldn't send you guys nobody I, that didn't help me. Yeah. You guys are my family at the end of the day. So if they help me, they'll help you. And if he, he's connected with the sport of boxing, the guy's been around the sport of boxing for a long time. I didn't find that out till after we've been doing business. <laughs> so if he can help us, he can help you. Yeah. Lifesavers mm -hmm. Restoration.
All right, Ant. First off, let me say that was fire. Yeah, we just had, <laughs> we just took a commercial break, and Sean was the commercial. That was, but that's a flex. He said, yeah. "We'll be right back." We go to the commercial, change the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that was fire. I love it, man. This is, this is, we trying to take this up to another level. Um, let me do this pro box thing real quick. Before we do, let me go oh, into say. Oh. Let me, let me let y'all know this. I don't know if anyone's have done this, but I am. The biggest Sean Porter fan ever because I've been around this man again since I was 17, 18. I watched him go up and down. I watched him win nationals as amateur, lose 20 pounds, turn pro, <laughs> like win the title at pro. Um, I'm just a fan. Now he's in his own lane with this podcast. Podcast is dope. Thank he you. just had his own commercial. Like, that's it. When you <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, shout out to Sean, man. Everything you're doing, man, for real. Like, I want. You give a lot of flowers. I want to give you a flowers. I'm Thank here, you, bro. man. You, you the man, bro. And listen, when it comes to the commercial stuff, I've just always wanted to do that my whole life. I feel it. So I, I, I done brought in some stuff that just, it's like, why are we doing this? And how much are they paying us? I'm, I'm like, it don't matter. I, I want I want the experience of creating a commercial. I, I, I feel it. Mean? I feel it. Because just now as I watched it, I was like, dang, I want to do this too. I want to do a commercial. Pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top. You feel me? Okay. Off the top. That's it. And let's pull up Pro Box TV real quick. Pro and Box then TV. After we do Pro Box TV, then we'll get into what's coming up, all that good stuff. I'm excited some to talk some boxing some with stuff you. Coming up. We, gotta we be... ain't really talk boxing, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, we ain't never really talked boxing. There's so like much that. going on. It's we, a lot going on. So get, I'm going to let you handle it. We got to get to it. We got to get to it. So, real quick, Pro Box TV, a new uh, platform that is going to deliver all of the news of boxing, current. Uh, even the um, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the stuff that the 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 breaking news, all that kind of stuff. They are um, they're Pro Box TV, and uh, I've joined that platform. I'm looking forward to it. My first day of work <laughs> is Thursday, and Sean um, is capping. Sean is a stay home daddy now. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife. Uh, so <laughs> news they got um they got talk shows like my like mine and then also podcasts as well. Uh Timothy Bradley's on board, Chris Algeri's on board, Teddy Atlas is on board, and there's a few others that are on board as well. I just want you guys to tune in, uh get uh familiar, uh, because not only will I be delivering some news here, I will be mixing and mingling some stuff you catch it here, some stuff you're gonna catch it there. And y'all know how I like to do, man. I like to keep y'all on your toes. So if y'all want to know what I'm thinking and y'all ain't see it here, that means you got to go to Pro Box TV. That's a commercial right there. Yeah, yeah, Click. Back we'll, back. we'll cut that. We'll back cut to that. back with it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, back we'll, we'll cut that. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm excited about it. And um, I get a paycheck. You know what I mean? I get, Checks get, are always nice. They get me a paycheck Checks. every now and then. We got a good like 20 minutes to bang this out. All right. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it. What's first? Uh, we got we got Canelo and Charlo. Let's Canelo go. Let's go Canelo and Charlo. And Charlo. Charlo. First off, who you got? For, I got I got Canelo. Okay, I got Canelo too. Yeah. Why do you have Canelo? I got Canelo. Number one reason I got Canelo is because of the layoff. I just think that it's been too much time off. Uh, again, I, I respect what he did in the rematch against Castaño. He stopped Castaño. I think it was the last round. Might have been the eleventh round, but he stopped Castaño. Made his adjustments. And I saw what I thought I saw was there were adjustments that were made when he went back to the gym. I and it's hard to make in-ring adjustments. And you can see that right there for him and Castaño. Castaño moved off rhythm, things like that. Gave him trouble. Canelo's not going to fight like that. But the fact that he was able to go back to the gym. Make the adjustments. Make the adjustments. But then sure. see, like basically, he saw his money working. Mm -hmm. And now you done went over a year now without seeing... The fruits of that labor right and there. That's what's throwing me off. That well, first let me talk about the positive. I love that he has Guzman in his camp now. Bringing Joan Guzman in okay. was a dope addition, in my yeah. opinion. So I love that. I love that he's been out of the drama. You know, the other Charlo going through everything. Like he separated himself from that. I love that he's done that. Yeah. I hated his energy at the press conference, bro. Uh -huh. I hated. It. He was just, like it just felt like to me. No disrespect. It just felt like. He was happy to be there. Yeah. It didn't feel like I didn't feel like 
I was listening to a winner. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Yeah. This is going to be a hell of a fight. Ain't no hell of a fight, bro. I you want... sound like you. <laughs> you know I, mean? like, I want that same energy we just witnessed when it was, I'm going to smoke this bud. Yeah. I'm, you feel me? This big, I'm going to catch this big fish. Like, that yeah. kind of energy. Yeah. Like, that's what I want to see now. He like, was doing that for somebody else. Now it's time exactly. for you to do that for Girl, yourself. You like, Yo, it's going to be a good fight. We're going to put on. Nah, bro. Like, that's not the energy to beat that man. Like, so then when you... Rewind or fast forward and you get to the psyche of a fighter getting in the ring with Canelo. We got to understand that everybody getting in the ring with Canelo, they're not just getting in the ring and fighting. Now they're really counting some dollars. That's you know what fight. I mean? That's a fight. And now you're really counting who you're getting in the ring with and how much he's done and who he's done it against mm -hmm. and things like that. And so as hyped up as I can get right now, you can get too hyped up. Too and, hyped, too nervous. And, and get yourself so much, yeah. out of it. And people don't, people don't think about this when it comes to fighting Canelo. The energy, the the energy is totally different from anything we've ever experienced. You can't. Getting, you get imagine you get in the ring, right? And then you have to watch somebody's whole promotion video come when they put his promote, like him knocking anybody out. Yeah. Then the mariachi band. Yeah. The crowd going crazy. Yeah. He takes ten minutes walking. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like all that matters. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you have to have the right kind of temperament for that kind of energy. And yeah. I don't think Charlo showed that kind of, because I got to be a, a effort. I don't care. Yeah. I got to be, I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like he cared. Yeah. He was happy to be there. Like, yeah. he was too happy. And it kind of reminded me of when Caleb fought him in, in the ninth round. Caleb was like, I'm doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> when he said it, not to really, you Nah, know, first but, off, shout out to Caleb, because you feel me? Like, that's my that's guy. That's the guy. That's yeah. I like Caleb a lot. Yeah. But that blew my it mind. It just time. Like, it's not time, time, bro. Like, you... It time. So I just feel like we got to get rid of the... the. There's, there's, there's a, like a facade. There's a... Yeah. It's like a fantasy. And it, when that fantasy becomes a reality, it's like you got to handle it like every golden, other reality. He's the golden ticket, but you got to look at him as just an open opponent. But yeah. you got to treat him like everybody yeah. else. You can't, because you getting paid lit, don't mean you got to give him a certain amount of respect. Yeah. Oh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Nah, bro. Yeah. It should be, huh, you done messed up, stupid. Bro, I, I remember hearing um, Deontay Wilder when he said, I gave, he was telling Tyson Fury, I gave you a chance. You was on your couch before I agreed to fight you. Mm -hmm. I put money in your pocket, and I'm like, I like that's disrespectful to me. Like, yo, I did what I had to do to get here. Yeah. I'm not about to be looking at you and all of these belts and how much money yeah, I'm gonna said, get. I'm looking past just, all that, you and man, I'm coming I'm to knock you, you out. I'm gonna beat you. That's it. You a man? I'm gonna beat you. And that's kind of the good news. What's the good he news? got some time. You know what I mean? That yeah, was that was the other yeah, day's real, energy. You know what I mean? So and like I said, time. having Guzman is dope. Like I feel like they're taking this fight very serious as far as yeah. the preparation. Yeah. So um, what you like about Guzman? I know I, I know all about him. You know um, what I, mean? I love because you know I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew yeah. up in the gym with Guzman, so his yeah. footwork is ridiculous. You yeah. know what I'm saying like his timing, his defense, um, his range. He he's a, he's a pure boxer. You know what I, mean? I feel like. And I feel like Charles a really good boxer. He's really technical. He's basic, yeah. but the, his ba he's really good at his basics. So somebody that can highlight that, I feel like it's gonna really help him. I I had their dad on the podcast during the week of of um, Spence and Crawford. Okay. The dad was just in the media room, and he said he wanted to come on the podcast. Yeah, no problem. So I'm talking to him, and he keeps referring to time. He kept referring to time, and I'm like, I get it, because this could be his night. This could be Charlo's night. That's right. Honestly, it, it could be the time and it could be Canelo's it could be, night. It could be. But he kept talking about time. And the reason why I bring that up now is because I looked at him, I said, yo, you keep talking about time. And the funny thing about that is both of your kids have this blessed ability with timing. He said, That's yeah. Rough. He said, I had it as a fighter too. I said, wait a minute. So you used to fight? <laughs> Hold up. Yeah, I was, so you used to fight. He said, yeah, I fought just like my boys. We was, I was this, I was that. I just didn't go as far as they did. I didn't do this, I didn't do that. They got me, so they're here. And it's like, well, wait that's a minute. Dope. Now you're telling me about this generational yeah, that's blessing right here. That's dope, yeah. And to me, that is the one thing that, I, that, that gives me like, yo, if it happens, it's because of this timed right hand that nobody can anticipate yeah, and nobody timing, can shout see. Shout out to his timing is ridiculous. Like, time is ridiculous. It really is. Both of them. His timing is ridiculous. That's fact. Both of them. That's that fact. ain't taught. That ain't nothing, you know what I mean? If anything, Coach Guzman. And I, was, and, I actually did, a, I did an interview earlier today in Swain because I fought Mel and someone was like to me like, oh, I think of his power. And I said and I said this. So it's funny you said I said his power wasn't hard until it was hard. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like we went rounds and it was nothing. Then it was just one pump, boop, and yeah. I'm on the floor. Yeah. Because he timed the shot so yeah. perfect. He timed me stepping in. He caught me. I still walked right into his right hand, bro. And to like, me, and I respected them. And I was just on the phone with my brother. My brother said he liked their styles. And I'm like, well, they basically just rely on their right hand. They don't really have much from the lead yeah. hand. They're not throwing no lead hook. You know what I mean? But their right hand is so educated. Comes from right hand is so educated, and it's just it's a blessing. So they're good, man. They're good. They get on my nerves, but they're good. I got I got this seventy thirty for Canelo. I, I just said earlier seventy five twenty five. That's funny. I got That's I got thirty percent on the right hand. <laughs> you know I, feel it. I, I got thirty percent on the right that. hand. That's good. But the fight I'm most excited about right now. Which one? Well, I got two fights. I'm lying. Two fights I'm excited about. I'm excited about this Benavidez boo boo fight. Yeah. That's crazy. Is it done? That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing yeah. it's done. I'm hearing it's done. So that's going to be crazy. I'm going into Camp Benavidez. So you know I'm the cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to hear that. I hate to hear <laughs> that. But now, you know, boo boo's my man. Yo, shout out to boo boo. Like, um, we shared the ring a couple of times and yeah. sparring. And he's, he's, Elite. He's, he's lit. He's the kid lit. is elite. He's lit, bro. Has always been. He's so awkward, but like in a in a, it's not a weird awkward. It's just an awkward. You can't get his timing right. The way he moves his body, like he's great, bro. So they was talking about art earlier. I always felt like when Boo Boo fought, it was like it was like art. Okay. You know I mean, that's facts. That's like facts. you know when you talk about boxing being a sweet science, it was like his shit was just sweet. You know what I mean? Like the way he yeah. did it, and, they, or they, does it? Excuse they, me, I don't they mean really it. understand yeah. the science. I even remember when we were sparring, and his dad, with the advice his dad was giving him when we were sparring. You were there when we sparred at your gym, uh-huh, uh-huh. and the advice that I could hear his dad yelling, I'm like, damn, that would work. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, <laughs> so late night. Wow. Like, like, I promise you, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was in the ring with him, and I still remember. I'll never forget. He said something, and I was like, damn, back up. That, that'll that work. Like, you yeah, that? yeah, that's clean. That's clean. <laughs> Listen, two things with a high-powered sports vehicle. You got to drive it, but you can't drive it too much. Mm, that's, you can't let it sit too much. That's that's key. Can't let it sit too much. I I had to get my Porsche back because I was like, man, like, can't, I, can't, I can take it out, but then I can't take it out. What you Boo Boo been sitting still, bro. That's that's the biggest thing, bro. That's the problem. That's, and Benavidez is active. That boy yeah. <laughs> is active, so like yeah, yeah. like Benavidez, like he ain't he fighting what once, twice a year. Yeah, it's, not, it's not even that, but it's just I don't know something about like that, his pops and the way they train. Yeah, the way, like he's very he's very into boxing. Yeah, like, he's very on point, like. So that's that's really. I'm what... so excited to get out there, bro, and just work with them, man. Like I love Spawn Benavides. That's like, what's up. And their whole family, like the Benavides, are good people. How many camps you been in with him? Um, two, two camps with him, and then we fought. You know, so two people never had a chance against. Never him. had a chance. <laughs> never, had, never had a chance. Never had a chance. Like I told you, man. This. So what do you like most about this fight? Um, the excitement because I mean you got him going against another undefeated fighter, which. Shout out to him for doing that back to back. That's that makes sense. Southpaw too. Yeah, the Southpaw. Um, and just not knowing what Boo was gonna bring to the table. Cause yeah. you remember like people ruin for Benavidez or me saying Benavidez is gonna win. We've never seen Boo Boo in danger. Yeah. You've really never yeah. seen him in danger. So it's hard to say that. Yeah. You know? Like it's hard to like Man, he why? had a couple fights over there on the zone and he was just letting He was he was like I've seen him not look his best. Yeah. You know? But I've never seen him in danger. And that's my thing. It's like, all right, cool. If anything, I gotta say you fresh because you ain't take no punishment. No punishment. That boy you good. Nobody, you've really never been in trouble. It's him again. So you've been pro since twenty since two thousand and eight. It's been some time, but it's like the time ain't really and wore like, you out. Like, you know what I mean? Like you wonder if he's past his prime because the that's boy, my, yeah. the boy been he's been sharp and the man since the amateurs. Yeah, you feel me? It's been a really long time. So. Yeah. You yeah. never know. Like yeah. you just said, timing, timing. Yeah. You feel me? Like, so we'll see. This fight is a good fight. Boxing made a good one. Then we got Frank Martin and Shakur. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy because that's putting Dirk James right back into the fight again on yeah. that side. You feel me? Like, because yeah. now you got, you got, you got my little man fighting your little man. Yeah. After, you feel me? After Big Bro, then beat your Big Bro. Yeah. That's kind of, that story right there sells itself. You want to see the fight because of that. Then Shakur is just. But Frank is a, a too like boxing is just. I'm telling you, Frank is legit. 
He is. Frank he is, is all the way legit. He is. He is. I like him a lot. I like Frank a lot. I think this fight is going to be game plan and execution. I agree. I think Shakur is who, who has, he is. Who, who has, whose game plan has Because I feel like Shakur... Shakur is who he is. Exactly. So Frank is going to... They're going to have to really watch some film, really study this dude, and really try to... And that boy is just all the way different. Who? Shakur. Oh, my Lord. All the way different. 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 I agree. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Then I'll be having a rematch with um Ryo and um Prom Tom. Really? Yeah, a little B hop, little B hop and Ryo running it back. Okay, so B Hop. Yeah, that's gonna be a good fight. Boxing. B Hop came back to one one thirty five for that one, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, all right, yeah. B Hop. I heard he said he was going right back down there. Right back down. I don't know. Be I'm getting on my nerves, but <laughs> but, but he a good fighter. Yeah. So he's nice. He's yeah, nice. get on my nerves though. So shots I'm still him. I'm still stuck on on Frank Martin. I know we got yeah. There it is. Yeah, I was trying. I, to, I, I, I got. Know. I'm stuck on Frank and and Shakira because I really, I'm trying to. What I like to do is how can this fight like how, what's the how could he beat him? How is this competitive? Yeah, yeah, not yeah. not even how can he beat him and how, vice versa. Okay, but what makes this fight? What's what components makes this fight the most competitive fight? And we see the fight go like this, and then one take off. You know what I mean? So what do you think? What makes the fight I think I think Shakur, or excuse me, I think uh, Frank Martin's work rate has to be high. Mm -hmm. And uh, another good thing that I like about Frank, along, along with him being a southpaw, you already know, so it's, it's not a lot, of, you don't see southpaw a lot, yeah. you know, on, on game time. You know, you might see it at work, yeah, yeah, but fast, you won't fast. see it on game time. You know what I mean? And so I think that that might help Frank. And Frank is very explosive. He quick feet, he can get in and get out very quickly. You know what I mean? So this is definitely, I mean, he is, he's the cat and the mouse. You know what I mean? He's the cat That's and the mouse. And it's going to take somebody else. You got to play that cat mouse game with him. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know when to be the cat. Game when plan. Be, you gotta know when to be the cat. You know, that's yes. Yeah, that's fine. You're right. You're right. And uh, and they both. And you know, you know, Shago gonna be spawn, but you know, Frank gonna be spawn. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, those story, boxing storylines are getting so fire right now. And I, that's one thing I like about what the OTX dude was saying. Like they're really starting to tap into backstories and all that because this backstory for that fight sells it. You sells. got to. You it have to ride it. on that. That's a fact. Not saying that these guys can't sell this fight themselves, no, but, they could, but to to bounce on that, like you on a train now, you know what I mean? That's a fact. Instead of trying to instead of trying trying to drive it on your own, you on a train. Jump on that train and some actually what happens to Derek James if he takes another L? It's gonna be 0-2 with the with that on that side. Listen, man, it's a team. You know? Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, when it came to Errol Spence and Derek James against Bo Mack and Terrence Crawford. Terrence and Bomack were just more prepared. Okay. And they knew so what they needed to do. Derek James trained him now? Yeah, yeah. So he could, it could be 0 it's 3. Busy, that's a busy. It so could busy. be 0 and 3. Man. Sheesh. We, we need to talk to some, co talk to some coaches. For real. Cause like, how, how do y'all handle it? Nah, you, know, you know who I want to talk to? I want to talk to Bomack because, like, Bomack's energy is very interesting to me. Like, he doesn't strike me as. The technician that is showing that he is, you yeah. know, because I mean? even with Chris Eubanks fight over the weekend, Chris Eubanks like a totally different fighter. Different, <laughs> he like a totally different yeah. fighter, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, dang, Bo Mack might be the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause I really didn't think that. That was really like I think about two weeks of work though. Uh, yeah, that's true. Give or true. take, that's true. You know, so I could be more Chris than anything, but it could be that he put the. Well, punch. it could be exactly. He put the, yep. the last yep. little session, so. You gotta give him that, man. So I want to see that. I'm, I'm, you want to, you want to hear Bo Mac talk. I want to hear Bo and, and Derek. Like I want to say that because Derek James' energy is interesting to me too. Like he's very out the way but aggressive. Yeah. You know what I mean? He come. Yeah. Every now and then be like, where, where, where this come from? Yeah, he's out the way but aggressive. I don't know. Y'all had the fight coming on. Like it was a little static between. Yeah, them. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, my dad, he good for the yeah, static if it's fact. coming his that's way. And it was like. Wait a minute, Derek James and my dad. And it what's don't, happening? It don't, it don't seem like that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He be out the way and he be like, "What's well, what up?" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. All right. So yeah, man. Like I said, like there's so many storylines that boxing can run with if they do it the right way as far as promoting now. And right that's way. one thing we gotta tap on before I leave. We should tap into 
these promoters. This I'd is like, it. Then we done. Okay, these yeah. promoters, in my opinion, like I like just tapping over what the OTX guys just said. Promoters gotta start promoting. <laughs> they gotta start promoting, like for real, like telling these backstories more than just a post on Instagram. More than you feel me, like you gotta actually get these get these guys out there because there's some dope storylines in boxing. I'm one of them. You feel me, like so. Um, this just came to my mind. And I, and I know the audience will um, be able to understand this. Everybody knows that I'm a Christian. And you, we, you already know why I had to cancel Sunday's oh, recording. Let me, let me tell that story, y'all. Let me tell that story. <laughs> let me tell you this story. So I was to do this show on Saturday, right? Sunday. Sean, sun, was Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. Sean hits me up like 20 minutes. 20 minutes before. I, I'm already on my way here. I'm Not in the true. car. Not 20 true. minutes before I'm on. He's like, hey, yo, bro, I can't come. I can't. Don't be gonna I don't say bro. So, you know. Hey, I was already here, so uh, I, I got you beat. <laughs> I, I came all the way here before I found out. That's crazy. He has to hear me up like, oh, I'm going to lunch. And Pastor asked me to go to lunch, so I'm going to lunch with my pastor, which I'm always going to respect. You feel me? Like, I'm always going to respect. Yeah. You got to do that. So, so yeah. I was like, okay, boom. Then he kept going. So he should have stopped there. He kept going. He was like, <laughs> he was like, he was like we going to Encore. I'm like, you going to lunch at Encore? I'm like, the strip? <laughs> Doing the pastor? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh. All right, so I, I, I'm gonna go eat real quick and I'll be there later. So I go grab something to eat. Now I'm here, I pull up, I'm, about to, I'm like on this street. I get a text from Sean, hey, yo, bro, I ain't gonna make it today. <laughs> what happened? We just, what you and the pastor do? Like, right. so, so, how was lunch? Man, was, lunch was fantastic. Well, I bet. Uh, he I and bet. his wife went with me and my, with, with my wife and I, mm -hmm. and uh, and his other daughter. Man, we just we had sushi and just and just kind of like kicked it and bonded. And I was literally just telling my wife like a couple days before that I was like, "Yo, every time we have church people come to the house, it ain't got to be Bible study. It ain't got to be playing gospel music. Like, let's just." Kick back and relax. Mm. We're human. Like it's we can let's just kick it. I said, Pastor Randall always telling me he just wanna he just wanna hang out. I said he ain't always trying That's to dope, do dope. a Bible study with me that. or take me through counseling, you know. So this just happened to be one of those moments where we were able to um get blessed by the pastor. He told me to take him to lunch and then he paid for it. I said, all right, cool. So I invited him over uh, yesterday for, for barbecue and we we did it big. So, man, so I got a couple questions for you before I leave you. Since you're on the air. Can I, can I shoot some stuff? Yeah, all right, go. All right, boom. First question. Do you feel like this helps you? Like, do you ever think about making a comeback? For, nah? Absolutely not. Nah. Uh-uh. Do, do, like, do you feel like you loved boxing when you were a boxer? Did you Absolutely it? not. <laughs> okay. Okay. I said it last week. See, if you was watching the show. Ah, you should have been that. watching the show don't to get ready that. for this don't week. Don't do that. No, but, um, no, I just said it last week on the show. Uh, the tagline to my documentary that I'm working on right now. The tagline is, I never loved boxing, but I love what it gave me. Wow. Simple as that. That's dope. I never knew boxing was going to take me where I am. And especially when I turned pro, it was just, for me, it was turn pro, make money, and have more than what I used to have. I never really wanted to be crazy rich. So it was like, my mind really wasn't st stuck around making M's on M's mm -hmm. on M's. It was just, I wanted to have better than what, get yeah. my kids more than what I had. You know what I mean? That's so interesting to be on opposite spectrums of, like, why we box. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You feel me like All that? love for you. Yeah, I, I do it strict because I yeah, love you. All like, love for you. That's yeah. interesting, bro. Yeah. So the, but the, the, the crazy part about it, what I didn't get in my bank account, I got here and I got here from that's boxing. Dope. That's dope. I believe that. Yeah. Boxing really, boxing will grow you up. You yeah. Know? Like, really make, bring the man out of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like we, if you go into the psychology of archetypes of people, of men, when you realize that you become as a warrior, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. We are providers, protectors, yeah. lovers. Like you feel me? Like so, yeah. boxing calmed me down. You know yeah. What I mean? Because it gave me a, <laughs> I, it gave me an avenue to put this aggression. Yeah. And you know that's which is why I love it because I'm an I'm an aggressive dude. Yeah. You, I'm like you 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 you, you, know, <laughs> yeah, you know that. You yeah. Feel like, so I'm very aggressive. I'm very in your face. Yeah. And I feel like boxing, in every aspect, getting knocked out, knocked you out, like getting beat up in the gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like everything just it gives you a sense of. Humbleness, but yet confidence. I'm saying like, there's nothing life can throw at me. You feel me? Like, yeah. After a certain aspect, of it, yeah. You know so, so I love this. I yeah. love this. But it's it's dope to be friends with somebody that doesn't look at that way. But I can see like, you your story gives me it's motivates me because like, you didn't love it, yeah. But you wanted to use it to change your life and your dedication, your motivation, and all that. Yeah. Despite not loving it, was greater than mine. Yeah. 
and I loved it. It, it just, it, it, this was just like literally what God had for me. And God got some more for me and just been giving me stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. I know what I'm going to do with that. I know what I'm going to do with that, so on and so forth. I mean, I got the podcast that's taking me to Pro Box TV. has taken me to Saudi Arabia to do commentary. Yeah, Believe it or not, I had a plan to do commentary before I had a plan to turn professional. I'm going to do commentary before I even know what a world champion is. Oh, I'm a world champion. Can't wait to go do commentary. You know what so, I mean? So, so what do you think is bigger? Do you think love is a better motivator or necessity is a better motivator? Ooh. Ooh, ooh! It depends on <laughs> it depends on. This is the motivation, by the way. We just gonna kick okay, it with that motivation. Let's get it. it. It depends on the on the subject, the activity, and what and what the objective is. Okay. Because, like, I'll take my wife for an example. I love my wife, but I need my wife. There's something about okay, wow. and my wife. Like hypothetically, my wife was to leave me today. Like there will be an issue. Don't say that out loud. I'm just saying, like, I ain't trying to, I'm not trying psych, to. Psych, psych. <laughs> but, but to the point of okay. love. Like, I'm not trying to love nobody else. I'm not trying to love my children with anybody else. You know what I mean? So, she's she's both. She's a necessity, but but the necessity is there because of love. You know what I mean? I love that. It's a very safe answer. <laughs> you thought I was gonna go somewhere else with that. <laughs> that was lit. That was you lit. thought I was gonna go this somewhere else good. with this that. This boy good. This boy good. I'm 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 trained. I see that. Yeah. You got that. You tiptoed around that nice. Because <laughs> no, I, I love stuff. necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now nah, I respect it though. That's real. Um, and the same thing to you. I mean, like having to do this with your mom, and having the ups and downs with your mom. And then also understanding, I don't have to do this. Have have you ever questioned why you love boxing? Yeah, like honestly, I walked away from boxing a couple of times because I don't need it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So when it get when it got super tough sometimes or got awkward or stuff wasn't going my way, it's like man, forget this. You yeah. Know? Like oh yeah, I don't want they don't want to give me no fights. Yeah. I don't gotta fight anyway. You know what I'm saying? So like. But the love always brings you back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like because I don't need it, but then when I'm home and I'm bored, I'm chasing women or whatever else I'm doing, like I'm I miss this. I miss it. You know what I'm saying? Like I miss the training. I miss the the pressure that I've put on myself mm. from, for wanting to be great. Like I I just miss I I, I love this. Boxing yeah. is, is often referred to as a girlfriend. This You've is heard my, that right? This is my shorty. And if you and shorty. if you cheat on it, it'll cheat on you. And she, oh, she disloyal. You, if you treat it right, she it treats you right. No, she disloyal. She just, <laughs> she's, done me, she's done me dirty, but <laughs> but I'm still here. But I'm still here, shorty. I'm still here. still love you, baby. That's good, man. You know I mean? Hey, I'm happy to have you on the podcast. I'm really happy to be here, man. Like, and like I said to you before, man. I'm proud of you. This is dope. Thank you, man. The couch is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> just we just remodeled. Yes, sir. A shout out to the space. You guys go to uh, thespacelv.com and you guys can check out what this space is all about. This is where we at right now. You guys, uh, anybody else out there doing a podcast, doing a radio show, anything like that, and you need somewhere to stream your show, holla at me, holla at Ant, holla at the podcast. We'll make sure you get where you need to be. Or you can yourself go to thespacelv.com and, uh, and check it out. Uh, anything else? I mean, there are a couple things you had left on the list, but uh, I mean, we're we're getting on. We so. yeah. The yeah. question you told yeah. me we we gonna talk Errol Spence, Terrence. No, nah, we ain't doing that. We done with that. Okay, we done Listen, with that. So again, like just to recap, this little okay. bit of motivation Got right here. Go one. Um, and I'm gonna tell you too. I tell my I tell my son about wants and needs all the time, and he he How old can, is your son now? Uh, five. I Diggy don't. is five. Diggy can come in here and tell you about wants and needs. Okay. Because we're not about to buy no no toy every time we go out. We're not about to do Burger King and this and that, this and that, this and that all the time. We gonna have to, we gonna, you have to understand wants and needs. You want that, Diggy, but you don't need it. You're gonna survive. Is he gonna I, box? I see you in the morning. Is he gonna box? Man, this boy was talking to me about boxing yesterday. What would you say? How you I, said, I said, if you want to. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting because yeah. I feel like he's going to bring you that love. To boxing? Yeah. Ew. I mean he's gonna bring you that love. Again. And I feel like yeah, I feel like because 
because of your lack of love for you when you grew up with it, yeah, you're going to make, he's gonna love it because yeah. you're gonna treat him different with it. And I don't, and I never hated boxing, oh, I and, and I, I don't it. hate boxing. As you guys, I'm all clearly, over the world. You deport the podcast. Yeah, there ain't no way. I'm you, doing the best I can to take boxing into a space that it hasn't been in a long time. Yeah. And this is this is just a part of it. But yeah, real quick before we get out of here, weigh your wants and your needs. Understand, right behind your needs should be love. Right in front of your love or right behind your love should be the needs. Like, uh, want, uh, I hope. All that kind of stuff is over here with the with the wants. And you got to go after your needs. Handle the needs, and then you can take care of the wants. Put the needs first. This is the port away. Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. 